Today we're going to be talking about the best events to level up your immortals and get more powerful in Infinity Kingdom. What's going on guys? Cheers. Infinity Kingdom has tons of events every single day, every single week. There's always things to do in this game, but not all events are made equal. Some events aren't really worth going the extra mile to complete every stage of the way. So today we're going to talk about three events that you guys should keep your eyes peeled for. So when it comes around, you know, to go all in now real quick, I'll make you guys a deal. Okay. I'm going to smash this five spin. If you guys smash that thumbs up button, come on. I know you guys want to see what I get here on the wheel. I'll give you guys a second. I'll give you a second to click the button and bam, let's go ahead and see what we get here on the wheel. Yo, dude, yo, we literally no joke. You can look at my gems first spin first spin we got 30 fragments of richard and five fragments of esong and 20 market orders this was I, honestly i didn't expect anything i i didn't expect i just wanted you guys to press the thumbs up button but i actually got really that's like the best rewards i could have got actually wait i can add a skill on richard now oh my god dude my richard's getting really good now the lucky spin is not the best event here that we currently have available to us in infinity kingdom the very first event that we're going to be covering in this video that gives you insane value is the double reward rewards event. This is a three day event that comes around once every about two to three weeks from what I've seen. Usually it's about two and a half to three weeks. And this is my favorite event in all of infinity kingdom, especially for free to play and low spenders. I, when this event came around the last time I was glued to my phone for hours. The reason that this event is so good is because it doubles the rewards that you get from defeating gnomes. So not only are you going to get insane amounts of equipment for your immortals, you're also going to get a ton of enchantment chant stones to upgrade that equipment. And because you're defeating so many gnomes for three days straight, you're going to get tons of experience for your immortals, which is going to boost your power like crazy. So I'm going to give you guys a couple of tips when this event does come around. So that way you can maximize the amount that you're getting out of this event. First, it's worth noting that there are a couple of restrictions when it comes to this event. Okay. Everything that you see here will be doubled when you defeat a gnome, except for the experience and the first clear bonus. What do I mean by this? The first time that you defeat a gnome for a particular level, you get extra rewards as sort of clearing that milestone. But for this event, it won't actually double the first clear reward. So keep that in mind. You don't have to save your first clears for this event, but you should be defeating the highest level of gnome that you can as often as possible. Now for me, I find that of course I can defeat level 30 gnomes, but I sustain a pretty significant amount of severely wounded and dead units when I do this. And it makes it very difficult to grind this event for long periods of time. So I've, I've dialed it back a little bit to level 28. And I think that's a, uh, an area where I'm a little bit more comfortable defeating tons and tons of gnomes. Another thing that you should know for this event is that not all gnomes will drop the same pieces of equipment. Now, if you are missing equipment for tons of immortals, then what I would recommend is actually go through and just defeat all three gnomes in equal amounts. That way you get an even spread of all the equipment and it's all going to be doubled. And that's going to be great for your account moving forward. However, if you have your strongest March, and for me, that's my water March, March still, uh, if you're missing pieces of the best gear, on that March, I would highly recommend fighting the particular gnome that you need to defeat in order to get that piece of equipment. So what do I mean by this? Well, if we look at Peter the Great, for example, I don't need a chest piece for him because I already have the best chest piece that I can possibly get. However, I do need a better weapon, a better helmet and a better accessory. So what we can do is we can go in and we can look at which gnomes have the chance of dropping the weapon that I need, the helmet that I need and the accessory that I need. Well, good news. All the gnomes have a possibility of dropping weapons. So you don't have to worry about that. You can defeat whatever gnomes you want in that event, in that area. Uh, however, for the helmet and the accessory, uh, I want to defeat particular gnomes. So Trent will drop the helmets and you can see this. This is, this is not news. This shouldn't be news to anybody. You can see this in the game. Uh, and Rokes will drop the accessory. So what I would recommend for me is I'm going to defeat these two gnomes over and over and over again until I fill in those gaps in my equipment. This is the number one event for you to use your excess and excess extra AP potion items. Now, if your alliance is planning on taking a city soon, or if you have PVP content coming up, then of course you want to save some AP for that. So that way you can pull your own weight, hold your own in your alliance. However, anything beyond that and anything you're comfortable with using should be used on this event alone, because this is going to give you so much value as a free to play or a low spender when it comes to, again, your equipment 
strengthening your equipment, getting the equipment that you need and getting tons and tons of experience. I also don't think you should be afraid to use some healing speed ups and some training speed ups during this event. Now, don't use your universal speed ups to heal or train during this event. If you haven't maxed out your city, your, your technology, all that stuff is more important, of course. But if you have spare healing and spare training speed ups, you're going to want to use it here because you're going to run out of troops. If you grind this event for three days, it's just, it's going to happen. I know it's going to happen. It's happened to me. You're at some point going to train them back and it's better to train back troops and heal down your hospital than it is to just fight weaker gnomes for the remainder of the event. Because when you're fighting weaker gnomes, you're not going to be getting the equipment that you need. You're not going to be getting as much experience and you're really losing that value there. So I think it's worth it to use some of those speed ups during this event. I also think it would be okay to use something like an enhanced defense during this event, because the amount of troops that you're going to save during that one hour of grinding is going to make it worth it. It seriously is. I've noticed a nice significant uh, decrease in the amount of units that I lose when I use just a single one of these buffs, whether it's attack defense, crit rate, dodge rate, really, I would recommend the defense or the attack buffs. If you have extras of those, go ahead and use them here. If you don't have extras, if you're running low, of course you can, you can avoid it. You only use what you can for this event. Now, when it comes to experience, because you're going to be using your best March over and over and over again for this event, because you're going to be defeating the strongest gnomes you can to get the best equipment and the best rewards, you're going to notice that eventually your best army is going to be max level, which is 40. So at that point, you may run into the question of, should I start defeating the strongest gnomes I can with my second best army? And the answer to that is absolutely not. You always want to defeat the gnomes with your strongest March. And the reason for this is because you have the ability to reborn an immortal and get all of that experience in the form of items that you can then disperse to your other armies. What do I mean by this? Well, if you come into the alchemy lab, you can go into the reborn section. Let's use Hannibal Barca for an example. Okay. If I reborn him, I get everything back that I've ever put into him, right? So let's say this is my Merlin. For example, I come all the way down here and you'll see that they give you all of the experience that's ever been gained by this immortal back in the form of ultimate experience roles, right? Or any sort of experience role, which means that the experience you gain from the gnomes is converted into items that you can use on your weaker immortals. So what I would recommend if you're doing this event and you start to hit max level with your strongest army, I would recommend reborning the immortals in that army. And there is a cooldown. So keep that in mind. It may take a while and you may be able to only be able to do uh, one or two during the duration of this event. You should reborn that immortal, bring them back to level 39, boost them as high as they were to their highest boost level and bring their skill back to its level that it was at before. Then all the experience that you've gained from level 39 to 40, you can then put into your weaker marches to make them stronger. And honestly, that's a great strategy because you can see here that it takes so much experience just to get from 38 to 39 and from 39 to 40. It's crazy amounts of experience. If you come down here to my level 21, it only takes less than a hundred thousand, right? So you can get multiple levels on your weaker immortals by reborning your most powerful immortals and just bringing them back to 39 instead of 40, right? 39 instead of 40, you're still going to be able to defeat some of the strongest gnomes in the game. And all that extra experience is going to be converted into items that you can use for your weaker marches. And by using this strategy, you can level up everybody you need while still defeating the highest level of gnome throughout the entire event. Seriously, guys, the last time this event came around, I got probably about 200,000 enchant stones between the raw stones that you get from defeating gnomes and then dismantling all the equipment I didn't need. And that's how I was able to get this equipment to the highest level that I could possibly get it. It's super expensive at later levels. So again, you want to grind this event as much as possible. Now, the second event that is super valuable to participate in every time that it comes around is the holiday events. Now, of course, this event changes with whatever the current holiday is. And what we're looking at here is actually footage from the time that I covered the Easter event. The holiday events come in a couple of different forms and it looks like the developers are still tweaking it ironing out some bugs and figuring out the best rewards for the most amount of players so these events do change a little bit but there's typically a five-day event that will come around for holiday whether it's easter christmas new year's there's a, coming up there's going to be a six month anniversary event for infinity kingdom whatever it is there's usually a holiday event probably once a month once every five weeks and going through this event you're going to see that you have the 
opportunity to get free philosopher stones free gems resources speed ups and often there's going to be ways for you to get fragments of epic immortals as well which is super valuable if you're a free-to-play player these holiday events will have different reward tiers some of which you may have to buy with a bundle some of which you may have to unlock with a certain amount of gems if you have the gems to do that great only if you can finish the event it's only worth doing if you can complete it a hundred percent however if you're just free to play there's still tons of value to be gotten here as you can see some of the event items you can exchange for like i said before philosopher stones dragon crystals there's all sorts of really great things that you can get here absolutely for free a lot of times for these events you're gonna have to defeat some gnomes in order to get the event items so this is another good opportunity for you to save your ap for when these come around as you can see here i had the opportunity of getting king arthur absolutely for free with the event items and again they do this all the time there was recently a redeem event for leonidas here in my server so if you're a free-to-play player doing these events is how you're going to unlock some of these immortals a lot faster which then they're going to show up in your market orders and you can continue Continue to get them for the rest of the time that you're playing the game and the third and final event we're going to be talking about in this video is the illusion battlefield this is an alliance based event that comes around i believe every other week if i'm not mistaken and the rewards that you can get from illusion battlefield are really really good depending on how well you perform and if your alliance wins the event or not if you've never played illusion battlefield before essentially what this event is is the participating members of your alliance will go face to face against another alliance in a illusion battlefield map that map has four towers a central tower a sun altar and a moon altar and the point of the entire game mode is within a particular amount of time your alliance wants to get a hundred thousand points in this event the points are called violet breath and the way that you get these points is by occupying those towers that are on the battlefield however your enemy is going to be trying to occupy those towers as well so you have to teleport attack these towers take them from your enemy and when you actually capture a tower and you've satisfied the occupation value requirement you're going to start getting that violet breath over time now if you want to take a tower from an enemy you got to defeat all their units in that tower and then satisfy that occupation value and then you're going to start getting value violet breath for your alliance so as you can see here if you get 300 000 points you're going to be getting five philosopher stones tons of speed ups here you're going to be getting alliance tokens you're going to be getting 1500 gems and if you win on top of that you're going to get two more philosopher stones a bunch more speed ups and 400 more gems so if you are one of the top performers in your alliance you're going to be getting 1900 gems and seven philosopher stones on top of all the speed ups that you're going to get as well so if you are able to participate in this event if you are free during the time slot that your alliance reserves you should absolutely be participating in the illusion battlefield every single time that it comes around not to mention the developers have actually recently been optimizing the illusion battlefield event and they've been putting a lot of time and focus on this event recently they've gone ahead and color coordinated different territory names troop marching routes and building names on top of that they also added a mini map so that way it's a little bit easier to communicate with your entire alliance they also added tons of statistics that you get at the end of the illusion battlefield event so you can see exactly how much you contributed and how well you performed compared to maybe the last time you played so now you can see your battlefield contribution your total units killed you also can see total units severely wounded as well as total prosperity damage inflicted power occupation duration sun altar and moon altar occupation duration as well so the illusion battlefield experience has never been better and this again is one of those events where you get such good value you should absolutely participate as much as you can guys make sure you drop a thumbs up on the video it helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other infinity kingdom players might see it if you've never played infinity kingdom there's a link in the description below to download the game it's absolutely free to play i've got a bunch of guides on my channel already if you're brand new and you're ready to get started go ahead and click that link i'll also have all of infinity kingdom's official social media accounts down in the description as well where you're going to get a lot of information on upcoming events and they also give out a lot of free gift codes over on their discord so make sure you check that out as well comment down below your favorite events in infinity kingdom where you think you get the most amount of value seriously i would love to hear from you guys i want to see what you guys are up to if you're new around here make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload an infinity kingdom video as always my social media links they're in the description below so make sure you follow me over there on instagram facebook twitter discord all that stuff it's always down below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omni i will talk to you guys again soon peace